My name is Holly Carroll. I'm a biologist with a passion for the great apes. But they're all endangered, and we're losing them much too fast. This is forest loss forever. And I wanted people to see for themselves what's happening. How amazing is this? With a film crew, I traveled to some of the world's most remote forests to be the first to film all the apes in 3D in the wild. Look at the plane stuck. It was a daunting and sometimes perilous adventure, but always rewarding. Come with me now for a behind the scenes trip of a lifetime as I go walking with the great apes. In 1872, Charles Darwin caused quite a stir when, in his publication, The Origin of Species, he asserted that humans had descended from apes. But today, study after study has proven that, in fact, we are one of the living primates. And our closest living relatives are the bonobos and the chimpanzees, whom we share 98% of our DNA with. In the 60s, Jane Goodall discovered that chimpanzees use tools. But back then, we were known as man the toolmaker. It's what set us apart from the apes. Because of her controversial discovery, we needed to redefine tool, redefine man, or accept chimpanzees as one of us. We've learned a lot about the apes in the last few decades, but somehow our concern for them has not evolved as quickly. All the world's great apes are in danger because of the actions of man. I went to New York to meet with Jane Goodall to see what's being done to help the apes. I think it's really important for uh, people to, first of all, understand who are the great apes, how like us they are. I mean, you know, when I began in 1960, we had absolutely no idea that the DNA of humans and chimpanzees differed in structure by just over 1%. I mean, we had no idea about that. And so it's really important for people to understand their biological relatedness uh, but for me, more important, the behavior, you know, kissing, embracing, holding hands, personality, the uh, long childhood, the learning, all these things to me are the most fascinating of all. Uh, but then the threat, I think that very many people in North America and Europe don't realize chimpanzees are threatened. I think they see cute little chimpanzees, still you see them on entertainment and how can they possibly, they're in all the zoos, how can they really be threatened? Jane's books inspired me from a young age, and I was eager to see the place and the chimps I'd read about all those years ago. Her research has been ongoing here for more than 50 years. It's so awesome. Greeted by baboons. It's the welcoming committee of Gombe. Little do people know that there's probably more baboons here than chimps. I've always had a soft spot for baboons, but I can't wait to see wild chimps. Yeah. 
After a good night's rest, we're eager to set out. We were told the chimps can be spread out across the park, so we split up to have better chances of seeing them. The 3D team got lucky, finding a group of chimpanzees to film, and even had a close encounter. Meanwhile, I was sweating my way up another valley, but looking for chimps in this forest was like looking for a needle in a haystack. Well, as it turns out, tracking chimpanzees is not easy. This is a very hilly, steep environment, and it's easy to lose them in the dense understory. So we didn't get to film chimps today. But when Jane Goodall was doing her original studies up here, she used to come up to this place, which is now called Jane's Peak. And she would look across in the valleys and uh, listen for chimps and see if she could find them. Back in her day, the chimps weren't used to the presence of humans and would run away before she'd even see them. But she persevered, and now three generations of chimpanzees are used to being studied. I was feeling sorry for myself that I didn't see the chimps. But I thought about Jane and what incredible patience and dedication she had, and it really gave me some perspective. And then, to my surprise, right here in the camp was a group of chimps. Like humans, chimps live in nuclear family groups, but will occasionally gather as a community. As if it wasn't amazing enough to see chimps so close, I found out it was none other than Gremlin's family. I remembered reading in Jane's books about Gremlin way back when she was a baby, and now she was in her 40s, an old and wise grandmother. It felt like meeting a favorite storybook character. And here she was, with her daughter Golden, and grandkids, a set of twins. Seeing the chimps walk through camp was a bit like being in some sort of reverse zoo, where people live in cages and the animals roam free. But these are special primate-proof houses, so that the animals here can remain wild and not be tempted by human foods. In chimp society, males are dominant and are known for very aggressive displays of their strength. This little boy practiced by throwing a rock at me. In the primate world, if you're threatened, it's best to seem uninterested, avoid eye contact, and if you can scratch imaginary itches, even better. Thankfully, my nonchalance worked and he lost interest. At this time of year, the chimps were feeding on tiny fruits, and because they're so small, they have to stuff their mouths full of them to suck the most nutrients out. It creates what's called a food watch. When I saw them, I felt like a kid again, falling for that old gag, do you like seafood? 
See? Food. I'm watching two dung beetles roll a little ball of chimpanzee poop down this hill. It's pretty cool. Well, they're helping to disperse the seeds that the chimp's also dispersing in its dung. And when you disperse seeds, you disperse trees, essentially, and you help the forest propagate. And the forest is a great sink for carbon dioxide, which we humans are creating a lot of. Jane still has her house here at Gombe, and visiting it felt to me like being in some sort of shrine. Researchers come and go, and Jane herself still visits every year. But the place felt timeless. It's as if she never left. I could feel her presence. To top it off, the current alpha male of Gombe Group stopped by. Such an impressive animal. I was elated, but his size and strength were definitely intimidating, and I didn't realize how close he really was. And it occurred to me, if he'd wanted to go into the house, there'd be no way for me to stop him. Here at Gombe, the chimpanzees and the forest are protected, but that is not the case with most of the world's chimps. Forest destruction, bushmeat, and the pet trade are wreaking havoc on this species all over Africa. In the Congo, I was confronted by this firsthand when I met Anzac, an orphan chimp. Um, somebody probably killed her mom and then kept her as a pet. And thankfully, the Congolese government intervened and confiscated her. She's being taken care of by a veterinarian until she's healthy enough to go to a chimp sanctuary. <laughs> She looks really cute and like something you might want to have, but this is a horrible reality, actually. Because she may never get to go to the wild, and she may not even survive. These orphans end up in sanctuaries like this one, where people need to care for their every need for the rest of their lives, which is expensive and often relies entirely on donations from people like you and me. that if you're going to save chimps, you have to empower humans. She started microcredit loans for small business and improved health care in Tanzania. And these humanitarian initiatives are now global. She also created a program called Roots and Shoots, which engages children to improve the planet because she feels that we need to raise our children to treat the world better than we have.
On the other side of the world, Dr. Matsuzawa has been studying chimps as long as Jane, but he's focused his research on their cognitive or intellectual abilities, and what he's discovered is astounding. Normally, I hate to see apes in a laboratory, but this place is very different. The animals get to choose to engage in the study. This is Ai and her son, Ayumu. They come every single day because they love to do these tests. Dr. Matsuzawa has applied years of field research to the design of the chimp enclosures. The structures mimic the tall trees of their natural habitat. And performing tasks for small food rewards simulates the mental stimulation of foraging for food in the wild. The computer games are actually testing the speed of their spatial and sequential memory using numbers. And Ayumu has a particular aptitude for it. I wanted to see how I would compare with the chimpanzees. Okay. So the task is simple. I'm shown a sequence of numbers, one through eight, scattered randomly across the screen. Okay. I just have to memorize where they are before they disappear. Uh, thought I had that one. Okay. I that one. like uh, almost seven to ten seconds but you still feel it's really difficult right yeah seven to ten seconds you think it took seven me? to ten seconds and it's really long compared to the chimpanzees so the last condition that you will receive is has a really short period of time you can see the numbers okay it's very short but just okay. prepare yourself okay well that was already pretty hard you're saying he goes a lot faster than this yes much much faster you will see okay all right you are ready Okay, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Wait. No, I didn't even see the numbers. Mm hmm Wait, try that one more time. So this is how fast Ayumo does it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Exactly. Are you kidding? Like, I can't even see the numbers. Like, and he can memorize them that fast? Mm-hmm. That's chimpanzee does. He touches them all that fast. Right. Okay, that doesn't even seem possible. One more time. Let me try one more time. I'm ready. Okay. I, okay, I can't do that. Unbelievably, Ayumu can memorize them in a fraction of a second. So oh. it's not a matter of training. You may experience this task again and again and again for months and for years, but you cannot do this performance, this speed, this accuracy. That is a unique feature of chimpanzees. One explanation for why this might be has to do with their society structure. Within a group of chimps, everyone has a particular position in the hierarchy. Any animal more dominant than you is a potential danger, particularly if food is involved. Say there's a fig tree with only some ripe fruits. At a quick glance, a chimp needs to figure out which patch of fruits will be best to feed on and a safe distance from dominant males. The way the numbers are scattered across the screen mimics this distribution of fruit and chimps. So in the wild, having this fast thought process could mean the difference between a meal and a beating. Having seen chimps in the wild and then seeing how intelligent they are made it much harder to learn that in my own country, heartbreaking things are happening to the apes. 
here in the United States, there's still the use of chimpanzees in entertainment that we're fighting, and you can still buy them as a pet. Often, these pets are kept in appalling conditions, small cages, no contact with their own kind. And when they grow dangerously strong, often they're abandoned at roadside zoos or biomedical labs. But Patty Reagan is trying to make a difference. She runs the Center for Great Apes, a sanctuary and forever home for some of the animals rescued from these tragic backgrounds. Up there. The idea of an orangutan sanctuary soon became an orangutan and chimpanzee sanctuary because chimps are in far greater need for sanctuary care in this country right now. There are many more in private homes, roadside zoos, the entertainment business. There's so many sad stories here, like poor Clyde, kept in a basement cage for 45 years, so long that he wasn't strong enough to climb trees and was afraid to go outside. But here, tragedy turns to hope. They become strong and healthy. They get to live with family members when possible. They get to socialize. They even get to choose what healthy foods they eat. They have miles of skywalks and ropes, swings, and enrichment toys for fun and exercise. Next time you see a movie or a commercial with an ape in it, think about where it will spend the next 50 years of its life. These great apes are our closest cousins, and yet they're losing their habitat at an alarming rate. If we don't do something to protect them in the wild, it may be that our children will only see them in sanctuaries like this. Every one of us matters. Every one of us makes a difference every day. And we have a choice as to what kind of difference we're going to make.